DNA is a powerful management tool. By extracting and analyzing DNA, we can select for honeybees with favorable traits. For example, Brother Adams selected for bees that were docile, productive, and resistant to diseases and pests. Genetic analysis of honeybees also takes place right here at UD. This is the University of Delaware's Apiology Laboratory. Specimens are stored in falcon tubes until they're needed for research. They are kept at negative 30 degrees Celsius. Each of these tubes contains one honeybee specimen, each with its own identification code. Using sterile techniques, we first remove one of the honeybee's hind legs. Using the leg preserves the rest of the body in case we ever need to refer back to the specimen for future use. We snip the honeybee leg into several small pieces and place them in a micro centrifuge tube. These are our Kyogen Dianese DNA extraction kits. Each box contains all the chemicals we will need to perform our DNA extractions. First, we make sure that we have all our supplies set out for use, including collection tubes, spin column tubes, which filter debris from our sample, as well as our list of instructions to ensure that we perform the procedure correctly. The first chemical we add to our honeybee leg sample is called ATL buffer, or animal tissue lysis buffer. This chemical breaks open animal cells, releasing the genetic material inside. After setting our pipette to the proper volume of 180 microliters, we add the buffer to our sample. Next we add proteinase K, which denatures proteins in the sample and helps us to isolate a purer form of DNA. It's important that we shake the bottle before pipetting 20 microliters of proteinase K into our sample. Next, we vortex our sample briefly. This homogenizes, or mixes, our sample with the chemicals that we've added. Then we place our sample in a water bath, preset to 56 degrees Celsius. We leave it here for at least six hours, but usually overnight. This gives it the time and the warm temperature it needs for our chemicals to do their work. After the water bath, we vortex our sample again briefly. Next, we add 200 microliters of AL buffer, which lyses our sample cells even further. To make sure it mixes properly, we vortex our sample again. Next, we add 200 microliters of 100% ethanol to our sample. After that, we vortex it again. Then we transfer our sample to a collection tube with a spin column in it. This column has a filter strip that captures DNA while the debris in our sample is filtered into the collection tube for disposal. This machine is called a centrifuge. It spins our sample rapidly to help separate parts of our sample that have different densities. After we spin our sample, we will discard the flow through or the excess material filtered out by our spin column tube so that each time we do this, we're getting a purer sample of DNA. There are four more rounds of adding buffers, followed by centrifuging at various speeds. For the final two rounds, we do not discard the flow through. Instead, we combine these elutions. Our end product after these four cycles is a sample of extracted DNA. All our DNA samples are organized based on where the honeybees were collected. They are then stored in a freezer at negative 80 degrees Celsius until they are needed for the various research projects being conducted right here at UD.